Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a walkthrough video for Triangle Area Sheet 2. This, of course, is from MathSalamanders.com. Make sure to check out Math Salamanders. They have amazing math resources. So for this worksheet, we're talking about area. And what we're talking about area is we're talking about the space inside a shape. So how much space does it take up? Now, there's a formula for this, but first I want you guys to consider the area of a rectangle. So most of us are familiar with the area of a rectangle. And if I were to continue drawing this triangle into a rectangle, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Just something real rough. It looks like that, right? So the entire area of the, the rectangle would be all of this space. And most of us know that if we wanted to find the area of this rectangle, we would do the length times the width. So this length times that length. 8 times 4, and we would get 32 centimeters squared. And you'll see that all these are square units. When we're talking about area, we're talking about little squares that make up the entire space. That's why house square footage is important because it talks about all the floor space, not just one uh, dimensional distance like 8 centimeters. That's the length. We're talking about area. Now, you'll notice, though, that this triangle is not eight times four, because that would include all this extra space that we just calculated right here. We just added that on. And if you're looking closely, you'll notice that it's about half that distance, sorry, half that measurement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 32 centimeters and we're gonna divide that by two or multiply it by one half. So we can do 32 divided by two or 32 times one half. You get the same result. This is going to be 16 centimeters squared. And that gives us our area of this triangle and also helps us with the formula for an area of a triangle. So don't write this down. I was just using this as an example. What you're going to write down instead is something that looks like this. Area of a triangle, and I'm going to put that A means area of a, and then that triangle is obviously a triangle, equals one half times the base times the height. You also see it expressed this way. I don't know why my A looks so goofy in the first one. Let me rewrite that. Equals base times height divided by two. And that's often how you're gonna see the area of a triangle represented, either one of those two options. Technically, you could have it like this, base times height divided by two, but you're not gonna see that very often. Okay, you're gonna most likely see it in one of those forms. That doesn't make this one wrong, it's just it's better expressed in the first two ways. So we just need to identify our base and our height in each one of these triangles. So one through, what is this, six? We're gonna identify our base and our height, multiply those together, and then divide by two or multiply by one half. In this case, our base and our height always needs to be, let me erase all this, perpendicular. It always has to have a 90 degree angle between our base and our height. So in this case, we can call our base eight centimeters. So area equals, and I'm just gonna use this second one right here. Our base equals eight centimeters. Our height equals four centimeters. And we're gonna divide that by two. And I'm this is repetitive, but I'm just trying to emphasize here but that this is the process we're gonna use. So we're gonna write 16 centimeters squared for our first one. Let's move on to number two. So number two, we have these two measurements, and we're like, hey, what do we do with these two measurements? Well, obviously, it's our base and our height. There really should be this 90-degree angle there, but it can be assumed just because we're calculating the area of a triangle that we have to have this information, and this has to be 90 degrees. If you have another length here, like let's say it gives you, oops, millimeters. Let's say it gave you this length right here, this would be a trick. You would not use this length because you only want the height and the base that are perpendicular to each other. There's no perpendicular height given to that 10 centimeters, so you wouldn't use it. And again, that was just a hypothetical example in case you see something like this. But for this problem, we're simply understanding that 12 is gonna be considered our base. Area of a triangle equals 12 times our height of seven. That's perpendicular going from the base to what this is called the apex or one of our vertices, and we divide that by two. So what we're gonna get here is 
we're going to get 84 divided by 2. 12 times 7 is 84. And we're going to divide that by 2. So we do each one of those numbers divided by 2, and we get our area of 42. And don't forget the units. This one doesn't give it to you. Keep it in the same model. Don't just put millimeters. It's millimeters squared. Since we're talking about area, we're talking about square units. All right. Let's move on to something that looks like this. This one looks goofy. You're thinking, hey, I thought you just said that if we have a distance that looks like this, we can't multiply them together because this is not a right angle. And you'd be correct if that was the distance that it was giving you. Instead, though, it's giving you this perpendicular distance. So imagine, this is how I like to tell my students, is imagine that this is a mountain. Okay, so this is a snow peak mountain, and it's really angled. It's got this cliff here. If you wanted to measure the height of this mountain, you would take the distance at the very top and go straight down towards the center of the Earth. That's what this distance is here. It is a 90-degree angle, and I know it's not inside the triangle, but for an obtuse triangle, and that's what this is because this is an obtuse angle right there, your height is actually going to be outside of the triangle. So this is still our base, 6, area of a triangle, equals 6 times 5, and then divided by 2. Okay, and actually, I'm going to use the times 1 half this time just to show you it works in any way you do it. Okay, so then we have area of a triangle equals 30 times 1 half. Now, if you're unfamiliar with multiplying by 1 half, you can just do this, 30 over 1 times 1 over 2, like that, and we do top times top, bottom times bottom, and you'll see that we get the same thing, 30 divided by 2, which is what I said earlier for the first formula. Anyway, regardless of how we do it, we're going to get 15, and then we make sure we have the correct units, centimeters squared. I'll write that over here. I want to show you one more way to do a problem like this, just to take your math to the next level. So let's say you're doing this, and you want to do the times one-half method, which actually is my preferred method. So I know I've been doing the divide by 2 right here. But my preferred method is this one. I'm just guessing that most students are more comfortable with the divide by 2. But times 1 half is my favorite. And the reason why is because, because all this is multiplication. See? Multiplic multiplication, multiplication. I can actually multiply the 1 half in the 6 first. Why would I do that? Well, the reason why I would do that is because I know 6 is an even number. So if I multiply by half, it's going to give me a whole number, 3. And now I have a much easier problem. 3 times 5 is 15. Notice I had no division there. So this is just an easier way to do it, in my opinion. So make sure to consider using that method. Also, I'm going to do one more for you. I'm going to jump to number 4. And then 5 and 6, you'll be on your own. If you need help on those ones, just leave a comment below. So here, you might be tempted to be like, oh, the area of the triangle is 8 times 7 and then divide that by 2. You'd be wrong, because that would be only the area of one of these triangles. Really what we see here is we have an entire base that goes that whole distance there. So this one's kind of a trick, but we need to calculate this base length. So it's going to be 8 plus this 8. The total distance there is 16 centimeters. So then we're going to change this 8 to 16. Now, I'm actually going to, again, use the times 1 half method, and you'll see why this is effective. Okay, so now I have 16 times 7 times 1 half. The reason why I like writing it this way is because 16 times 7, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to be honest. But 16 times 1 half, that I do. I know that's going to give me 8 centimeters, and then I multiply that by 7. So you see where that simplifies the math a little bit. No, I don't. I wouldn't do 7 times 1 half and then multiply that by 16. That would be a little weird because then I'd do 16 times 3.5. Instead, I'm going to take the even number, multiply by 1 half. That makes it easier for me. So now I know that my area is 56 centimeters squared. And there I go. There's actually one further way I'll talk about real quick. You could take the area of 8 times 7 divided by 2 
Okay, and you get, uh, I think you get 28 centimeters squared. And then you could double it because you have two of those triangles. See how you have two triangles here? You have one triangle with a base of eight and a height of seven and another identical triangle of eight and seven. And you could just add those two areas together, but that's a lot of work. I would just recommend doing the way I suggested. You could do that same thing here because there's two triangles or just calculate this entire base length right there. That was a sneak peek at number five. Again, number five and six are gonna be on your own. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I have also a ton of other Math Salamanders videos, so make sure to check those out. I look forward to seeing you here next time on West Explains Best.